And I'm Matt. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript talks to the boys lacrosse team, catches up with Chamber Choir, and investigates the effect online shopping has had on small businesses. The U.S. House of Representatives approved a $1.1 trillion spending bill on Wednesday. The Senate is expected to vote on the bill on Thursday. Military spending is being increased, a victory for the White House. Additional funding for the arts was also included in the bill. On Wednesday, the Justice Department announced that it will not bring civil rights charges against the police officers who shot and killed Louisiana resident Alton Sterling outside of a convenience store in July of 2016. The decision comes as many are watching to see how the Trump Justice Department will handle police shootings. During his January confirmation hearings, Attorney General Sessions expressed his view that civil rights investigations inhibit police in their duties. Twelve Hampshire County residents were among those arrested while blocking access to a pipeline project at Oda State Forest on Tuesday. Approximately 60 to 75 people gathered at the pipeline site to protest the government allowing Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company to build through public lands. The company began widening its path through the forest by cutting down trees on Sunday. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? This week, I talked to NHS senior Sam Ohotnicki and NHS junior Tyler Alcroft about playing for the boys lacrosse team. All right, so your team has won nine games in a row. You haven't lost since the first game of the season. What have you seen from your team during this win streak? Um, we've really been working together as a team, moving the ball on offense, uh, communicating. Everyone's just working hard every day. Uh, we've definitely seen a lot of growth. A couple guys who are uh, didn't play last year have definitely stepped up and kind of filled roles that we lost from guys last year. So Monday night you crushed Amherst under the lights. Obviously they're not a very strong team, but how satisfying was it to be able to beat your rivals under the lights? Yeah, I mean it's a huge rivalry and it always has been, uh, especially since freshman year we used, we always lost to them. Um, so being able to kind of grow and be able to beat them uh, now is just a great feeling. And we know a whole bunch of guys who play there, so it's just it's nice bragging rights. It's always nice to beat the rival. It was getting a little chippy during the game. It was just nice to. Um, you know, get out there, get a win. So, Mass Live has you guys ranked third in Western Mass, but your next two games are against Longmeadow and Minichog, which are the one and two teams. Uh, so, what is the team doing to prepare for the top teams in Western Mass? Um, we've really, we've been watching a lot of film. We've just been kind of tightening up on some very small things, but we're hoping that if we just play the way that we have been playing, um, that they'll be very good games and we'll hopefully be able to win. Well, we're looking at their uh, defensive tendencies, especially Longmeadow likes to uh, press out and do some crazy checks on people. So we're um, having the defensemen uh, press out against the attack and Mid-Eastern practice, just get used to it. Uh, so your coach, Matt Strebel, he has played for more than a decade at the professional level. How valuable is it to have a coach with that type of experience? He knows what it's like to be a player and stuff and being the positions that we are. It's, it's really nice to have someone that, that skilled. He knows everything about the sport and he's just able to teach us and rub off on us enough where we pick up on smaller and smaller things um, so we'll, we're able to play out just a whole lot better and more unified as a team. And finally, you're going off to Skidmore for college yep. to play lacrosse. Uh, so what did you like about that program? Um, the coach is great. I love Coach Kier. Um, the team is also fantastic. It's just a whole bunch of nice guys. Um, and I, I mean, I just love the school overall. It's just great. Hi, great. Thanks so much for being on Hamped Up. Thank you. In other sports news, the girls lacrosse team scored a team high 22 goals in their last win over South Hadley. The baseball team is off to an 8-2 start and is battling with West Springfield, the defending state champions, for the top spot in their league. The softball team is 9-1 and are in the midst of a seven-game winning streak. Both the boys and girls track teams picked up wins over Minichog on Monday. The boys track team is 3-1 and the girls track team is 4-0. The boys tennis team is 3-3 and the girls tennis team is 4-6. Finally, the Northampton Girls Ultimate Frisbee team defeated Amherst for the first time in program history last Thursday. The team held off the Hurricanes 12-9 and junior Claire Babbitt-Bryan scored a team high 5 points in the win. 
Hi, I'm Phoebe Jessup. Northampton High School is known for providing students with incredible arts opportunities. One of these opportunities is the Northampton Chamber Choir, an audition-based class that runs during the spring semester every year. The group features many members of the Northamptons, the NHS a cappella group. Choral director Bo Flahai have created both groups 15 years ago and still brings the same enthusiasm to class every day. Although both groups are audition-based, the Northamptons and Chamber Choir are taught differently and cover different types of music. Chamber Choir focuses on traditional college-level choral literature, really difficult music. Um, the Chamber Choir music is actually harder than the Northampton music. You can't just walk into a class like this and expect to sing this level of music. It's like expecting to be on the varsity football team without practice and training. Although the two groups have faced scrutiny in the past for requiring auditions, the group and Bo agree that it takes skill to be able to sing this level of music. Even so, Bo says that they are always difficult to run. Um, so many people don't make it, and that definitely is heartbreaking for me as a teacher. I want everyone to have access to everything. Charlotte Harrison, a member of both the Northamptons and Chamber Choir, explained that the audition process is always difficult for everyone involved. Even if you've been in the group in the previous years, you still have to audition again for the next year. It has to be that way because it needs to be thorough so you can have the best group that you can possibly have. And so Chamber Choir and Northamptons has the seniors who are in the group currently auditioning the other people auditioning. And so that really makes sure that you are as thorough as you can be and you have the most unbiased perspective. There are many challenges that come with teaching and learning such difficult music. Senior Claire Chung and sophomore Sam Buell explained that during class, Bo sometimes runs quartets, or four-person ensembles, one person on each part, to be sure everyone knows his or her part. A lot of the times, we will record our part at the end of class, and we'll have to go home and learn it at home, like by listening to recordings and practicing on our own, and come in and be prepared to do quartets. It's a lot of music sometimes. It's not short little ditties. It's a lot of multiple page pieces. I mean, Leonardo, what we're doing right now is a mini opera, and it takes a lot of effort to make sure that you're going to be able to get through and hit your notes and everything. As a teacher, Bo sometimes finds it difficult to balance being tough and demanding with being encouraging. Um, the music is demanding, so I, as a result, as a teacher, have to be quite demanding in a class like chamber choir, but I don't want to crush people and hurt them. For many students, chamber choir is not only a place to improve their musical skills, but also a place to create meaningful and lasting relationships with other students. I got to be around a lot of older students who were acted like mentors, and I befriended a lot of them, and some of those friendships are still lasting to this day, most of them, in fact. We've kind of become like a big family. It has impacted my idea of how great the high school is majorly because I was able to interact with upper class on a daily basis. It's an amazing group and that's why I picked, we were doing a really difficult piece this year um, about Leonardo da Vinci and I knew this was the year to do it because I knew we had the size group that could handle it and we had a dedicated bunch and the trick is a dedicated bunch. That makes all the difference. The Chamber Choir will be performing on Thursday, May 11th at Helen Hills Chapel at 7 p.m. Hi, I'm Levi Sivian. Small businesses play a critical role in many cities and towns around the country. 44% of Americans are employed by businesses with between 1 and 49 employees. However, the rise of online shopping and Amazon over the last several years has threatened local business. I wanted to hear the perspective of local business owners here in Northampton on the effect of online shopping on small business. So I talked to Joe Blumenthal, owner of Downtown Sounds, Colette Katsikas, owner of Essentials, and Patrick Pizzotti, owner of Turn It Up. It affects the kinds of things we sell. Uh, Essentials has always been a store that tries to sell things that you can't get anywhere else. Generally, we try to be a store that has an experience versus just shopping. But that has changed. I mean, I've worked here for 20 years, so that has, I can, I can absolutely see an evolution. I mean, we all need to keep spending our money in our own neighborhoods and in our own, and, and why is that? Because that money goes to people you know, you know, that literally, I mean, it doesn't, re like, you can order something online from a small company and it pays someone somewhere else. There actually isn't anything wrong with that. But if we want to help support our own local economy, if we want to help support the people you know, I, when I bought a store, I will say it made, like, I've worked here for 20 years, but I bought it five years ago. Buying it also really changed my perspective because I do really feel like this is my money and do I want to hand it to a stranger or do I want to hand it to someone I know?
You know, my store traffic is much less than it was 10 years ago. And uh, the, the total level of business, I'm still doing business and there's still people who come here, but the level of business that I'm doing here is significantly less than it was 10 years ago. If you are a musician and you like to um, uh, uh, come to a place where you can see lots of interesting musical instruments, vote with your dollars. You know, get in your car, come downtown, find a parking space, go in and spend some money in your local store. And if it's not music you're interested in, you know, if you love to read, don't go to Amazon to buy a book, go to Broadside. Broadside has a wonderful selection of books or, uh, or Booklink and Thorns. First of all, if you support local business, then there will be local business and you'll have a cool Main Street downtown with a lot of shops and things and cafes and all the other things that you like to have downtown. And if you, if you don't shop in these places, these places won't continue to exist. Um, but beyond that, it's just a whole different level of experience where if you're just online, um, the, there's limitations to what you're going to know about or hear about. And I, we find that a lot of the kids who are really hip about music prefer to come in and experience tangible music uh, media um, as opposed to just, just streaming it on their phones. If you're into hip hop, you know, maybe you want to find out about the last poets who were doing it in, in the late 1960s or the early 1970s and, and they were doing stuff that's basically hip hop but way before this time or you know if you're if you're into guitar playing you want to listen to Jimi Hendrix and or whatever so there's there's so much there's so much music to explore that's beyond what you might just just get on you know Spotify or Amazon or Amazon streaming or whatever it is so or Apple Music Thanks for watching come see Accidental Death of an Anarchist directed by Ileana Fournier and starring Lucia Consperling shows run tonight at 7 and tomorrow at 2 and 7 in the Black Box Theater Great Thank you.